Hello, I am Tamara, and today I am going to walk you through everything you need to know to be able to easily add a zipper into the back of any pillowcase. So as you can see on this pillow, I have a nice different type of fabric, and it's the flap over top of my zipper. But if you don't want to do a different type of fabric and you just want your backing to be all the same, don't worry about it. I have another version that I will walk you through as well in this same tutorial. So let's jump on into that tutorial tutorial and get sewing. The first thing you will do is measure your pillow form from side seam to side seam. Then cut the fabric for the front of your pillow cover to the exact measurements that you just took. Now this is going to be version one where we will add that extra strip of fabric that is different than the other fabric on the back of your pillow cover. So you will cut a piece of fabric to the width of your pillow form, that measurement that you took, and then the length plus plus an extra inch and a half. That extra inch and a half is important for the length because that will be a portion of your seam allowance. We will trim it to the correct size later on. Next, you will cut that piece of fabric in half. And lastly, you will cut one more piece of fabric at four inches by the width of your pillow form. Now for myself, I used a zipper that was a little bit longer than my pillow form itself. I made sure that the little metal bits to the zipper itself on both ends go past the width of my pillow form. The first step is going to be folding that long narrow strip of fabric that we cut four inches by the width of our pillow form and then just fold it in half wrong sides together and then give it a quick press. To add the zipper to the back of your two pieces of fabric, you'll take the piece of fabric that you want on the bottom half, take your zipper and lay it right side face down along that top edge and just center it across the top. Now, because I'm using a longer zipper, I'm making sure that those little metal bits that are on the ends of the zipper are past both edges. Then I'm gonna clip it in place, use my zipper foot on my sewing machine and sew across that top edge, starting and stopping with a back stitch. Now that your zipper is attached to that bottom piece, just finger press it so that the zipper is laying in behind the fabric. Then take it back to your sewing machine and sew a top stitch along that top edge. Do that with a back stitch, starting and stopping. And if you used a long zipper, now is the time where you will take the zipper back to your sewing machine. Make sure your zipper head is in the middle of your zipper and then with a zigzag stitch, you'll just zigzag on both ends of your zipper. That way you're holding those zipper teeth in place. I do a wide zigzag stitch with a narrow stitch length. Once you've secured the zipper in place on both ends, you can cut away the excess of your zipper. All right, now we need to make a little sandwich with all of these pieces of fabric. So grab your top piece of fabric and decide which is going to be the edge that will line up along your zipper. Then grab your strip of fabric that you've already folded, grab that raw edge and line it up along the same edge, clipping it in place. Then take your piece of fabric with your zipper on it and lay that right side face down along that top edge as well, finishing by clipping that in place. Now the reason why I like to clip the flap and then the zipper in place in two steps is just to make sure that everything lines up neatly. Then you will take this to your sewing machine with your zipper foot and you will sew across that top edge, starting and stopping with a back stitch. And once this seam has been sewn in place, then you can open up your project and finger press that final seam open up your zipper head halfway and then sew a top stitch across the top edge along that flap that we sewed in place. The reason why you wanna move your zipper head into the center is because it will be easier to move out of the way when you get to that spot sewing your top stitch. And this is what your back panel will look like once you've finished. Now for version two, we will be using one piece of fabric for our entire backing panel. I will also be using a shorter zipper that I have extended to make fit for this pillow. If you have a smaller zipper that you want to use and you want to do this method, I will link in the description down below to my tutorial on how to lengthen a zipper. Cut your back panel the width of your pillow form and then for the length of your panel you will actually add four and a half inches to the length of your pillow form. 
Then take the length of your pillow form. For myself, because I'm working with a square pillow, it's the same as the width. And you'll take that measurement, divide it in half, and that will be how many inches in you will cut your panel in half. Then take the smaller half of your back panel, and along the top edge, you'll lay your zipper face down. Clip your zipper in place, and then take that to your sewing machine. Sewing along that top edge with a zipper foot, start with a back stitch, stop with a back stitch, and of course when you get to that zipper head just maneuver it out of the way before you continue down the line. Once you've sewn the zipper in place then just fold the fabric panel down away from the zipper, finger press that crease and then you will take it back to your sewing machine sewing a top stitch along that top edge. Now it's time to attach your zipper to the other half of your panel. So just lay your zipper's edge along the edge of your longer panel Clip it in place and do the same thing. Take it to your sewing machine, sew across using your zipper foot, starting and stopping with a back stitch. Now it's time to create our flap that will cover up our zipper. So grab your iron and just press a two inch fold over your zipper. Once you've pressed that fold in place, then just pin the edges so that your panel does not move. Flip your panel over so that you're looking at the back of your panel. Grab some pins and pin your zipper in place. Then take it to your sewing machine and sew across that top edge using a zipper foot. Of course, make sure to move that zipper head out of the way when you get to it and start and stop with a back stitch. And this is the result of the version two back panel. And once you have finished version one or version two, it will be now time to trim your backing panel to match your front panel. Now if you want to put your pillow together without the binding around the entire outer edge, you will lay both panels right sides together, clip around the entire piece, make sure your zipper is open halfway, then sew a half inch seam allowance around the entire outer edge. Finally, clip away all four corners before turning it right side out and you've got your pillow. This is the same method that I use in my envelope pillow tutorial. So if you want a closer look at these details, then check that tutorial out. I will have it linked in the description below. Now, if you like the look of having binding around the entire outer edge, lay both panels wrong sides together, clip around the entire outer edge, make sure that your zipper is open halfway, and sew a basting stitch using a eighth of an inch seam allowance around the entire outer edge securing both pieces together. Then you can add your binding like you would any other quilt. I have a tutorial that walks you through that whole process, which I will also have linked in the description down below. Let me know in the comments down below which backing you chose to make for your pillow cover, and did you add binding around your pillow, or did you opt to avoid the binding and you did it without? Either way, I hope that this tutorial treats you well. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy sewing. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.